continuing our adventures up California's beautiful central coast and over the next few days we're going to be exploring San Luis Obispo County. This county is made up of a bunch of different towns and cities both on the coast and tucked into the neighboring hills and mountains and it's one of our favorite areas in the state. We visited very briefly back in early 2019 so we're super excited to be back and see more over the next three days. We're starting in the beach town of Pismo Beach. Back in the 1950s, Pismo Beach had the title of the clam capital of the world, but unfortunately over time the clam population has disappeared. Despite this, the area still holds an annual clam festival and clam chowder is a very popular food item to eat here. And we hear one of the best spots to try it is Splash Cafe. They look like huge pillows. Should I just lay my head down right there? <laughs> We've got the famous award-winning clam chowder in a bread bowl to go, and I got it fully loaded, so you get all these toppings here, and not only is it a fun activity when you get it to go, because you get to construct it yourself, but it also keeps everything fresh, warm, and it keeps the bread bowl from getting soggy. They give you this whole massive bread bowl here, they give you the top, the chunk out of the middle, which, man, look at the crust and the toast on that. Ooh, buddy. And then there you go, your cool little bread bowl. By the way, fully loaded means, I guess you get extra clams, seafood, which I'm not sure what that entails either, which I think this is that here. It looks like there's some shrimp in there, maybe some crab, bacon, cheese, green onions. Man, look at this thing. This is a nice little handful. Mm. Wow, there is so much flavor going on in there. First of all, you just get that creamy texture, but then there's all these other little textures when you chew there. You got the crunchy bacon, a little bit of crunch from the green onion, and there's just loaded with so much seafood. Even if I didn't get the extra toppings on top, there's just so much already just in the clam chowder there. So many clams, they do not skimp on it. And then you got the bread bowl. So after I eat all the clam chowder here, then I can eat the bread that has sopped up all that clam chowder, dip this in there, use this as like a little spoon too. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited. <laughs> My first impression of this is the bowl is so crunchy. I'm uh, still learning to like seafood. I've been trying more things, so I'm gonna try this, but I don't know how I will feel about it. I'm gonna get bacon, because I do know I like bacon. I like cheese, so let's just load this up with things I like. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. It's kind of like a slightly fishier potato soup. That's kind of what it tastes like to me, but it's so creamy. The fish flavor isn't overpowering. It's definitely something I could handle with my growing love of fish. But the cheese and the bacon definitely makes it taste good. It's not every day you get to eat your dishes. So when you're done with the clam chowder in the bread bowl, just break it up. And eat it.
We ventured a little up the road from the pier area to Dinosaur Caves Park, which gets its name from a 50-foot brontosaur statue that H. Douglas Brown was trying to get built here in the 1940s, but unfortunately the neighbors did not like it, so construction stopped. Today it's an 11-acre park with your typical park items, plus some nods to its dinosaur name and a coastal path along the cliffs. You're a newborn. <laughs> This area is home to a unique geologic feature nicknamed Moros, which are volcanic plugs that were created over 20 million years ago when liquid magma welled up and solidified inside softer rock. The softer rock has since eroded away, leaving behind these peaks which jut up from the ground and are seen all around the area. There are 23 of them total, but the nine major ones are called the Nine Sisters. We ventured up the road a little bit to the city of San Luis Obispo to hike to the tallest one of them all, Bishop Peak at 1,559 feet. There are a few different ways you can do this hike, but we started off with Patricia Drive, which makes the hike about three and a half miles round trip. We made it to the top of Bishop Peak and it was actually quite a bit harder than we expected. It's really sunny today and the wind was not blowing on most of the hike so we were really really hot but now we have this nice breeze and you have views basically all around you. Even if you don't make it to the top you have views almost the entire hike so if you can just only go a little bit it's totally worth it. So where we stopped on the trail is technically the end of the trail, but you can keep going into those boulders up there behind me if you want to crawl around to get different views of the area. And we hear that this hike here is a great spot for sunset, but we've been staying at a really cool place that we want to show you for sunset instead. We've been staying on some national forest land above San Luis Obispo, and it is honestly one of the best boondocking spots we've had in a while. On a clear day, there's sweeping views of the area. You can see the ocean, the moros, and on two of the nights here, we had this crazy, insane cloud inversion where it felt like we were just above the clouds. It was, it was magical. We made these Verde chicken bowls for dinner and we're out here enjoying this amazing view for sunset. It's moments like this and places like this that just make us so grateful for our life on the road. Not every night has a view like this. In fact, most do not, but when we get to have this as our backyard, it just cannot be beat.
We're in downtown San Luis Obispo this morning and we just grabbed coffee at Scout Coffee, one of my favorite coffee shops in the entire US. We went here last time we were in town and I just fell in love with it. It is gorgeous inside with exposed brick, beautiful decor and accents, and they have a gift shop with some really cool items for sale. They also make their own syrups for lattes, which always gives a coffee shop 10 extra points in our book. We got the Wilderness Latte, which is Douglas fir, maple, and citrus. It sounded super unique. And then we got good old vanilla bean. You really get that Douglas fir taste just hitting the palate right there. No, it's super good. You can taste a little bit of the maple. Love it. Ooh. That is much better than I thought it would be. I was kind of nervous. You definitely, I taste the citrus a lot. Yeah, it's, it's sweet. It doesn't taste like you're drinking a tree. It tastes better than that, so it's really good. Just like Seattle, San Luis Obispo also has a gum wall, which is uh, just as unique and disgusting as the one there. So there's a couple theories of how this gum wall came about. One theory says that after World War II, it started as a San Luis Obispo High School senior class event. Another theory is that it started as a rivalry between the high school students and the Cal Poly University students. The university students thought that the high schoolers were trying to outdo them or one-up them. So they stepped up their game and they started this gum wall. It's been cleaned a few times over the years, but most recently in 1996, they tried to clean it one more time. For whatever reason, it didn't pass, so the gum wall was here to stay. We're gonna chew a bunch of gum and add our contribution. So fun fact, I used to be a gum addict. I could chew a pack a day, but I've recently quit the addiction and I'm trying to be gum free now, so I'm very excited to get to chew gum again. We have Orbit Sweet Mint as our weapon of choice for the gum wall. It's not bubble gum, so I'm gonna chew as much as I can to try to get a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dry. <laughs> That was probably the best one yet. <laughs> now, you gotta stick it on there without touching anyone's nasty gum. This is probably one of the grossest things we've ever shared on the vlog. Where should I go? This looks like a good spot without a lot of gum. Mmm. <laughs> we should have splurged for the big leak chew. Our bubbles are a little pathetic, but that's okay. <laughs> Okay, let's go wash our hands now. Being meat lovers, we knew we had to try the famous tri-tip while here in California. Tri-tip gets its name because it's the tip of sirloin and when cut, it has a triangular shape. It's a very popular food item here in California. It gained popularity back in the 50s by a man named Bob Schutz who introduced it to locals in his shop. Before the popularity, the cut was typically used for ground meat or stew meat because you only get two of these per one cow, so owners kind of thought it was kind of a waste of space to put in their counter. And over the years, it gained popularity from tourists and locals alike, so much so that it became known as California's cut. A popular way to try it is on a sandwich, and we came to Firestone Grill, who has served over 10 million of these hand-cut tri-tip sandwiches, which are served with a homemade barbecue sauce on a French bun. I'm so pumped for this. You can see still some of the rare in there. You got some juices dripping off of this. A little bit of barbecue sauce. This bun feels really nice and crispy. They give you so much meat. Yeah, and they stack the meat in there, huh? Mm. Heck yeah. You bite into that and the meat is so tender and juicy. You just kind of get like an explosion of flavor in your mouth. The barbecue sauce and the smokiness of that meat. 
and it is like cooked perfectly. And the bun too is just such high quality. A little bit crisp on the outside, nice and soft on the inside. Perfect, holding it all together. This is top notch. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Before trying this, I thought it would be too simple, just like the beef on weck we had in Buffalo. But just like that sandwich, which proved me wrong, this one also proved me wrong. This meat is so tender. Then the barbecue sauce, I had heard that it was pretty sweet, which kind of had me a little worried because I'm not really a sweet barbecue sauce fan, but it has incredible flavor. And I just, I'm just so surprised by how much I like this. It is way better than I thought it would be. We got a basket here of uh, these fries. They're seasoned too, so that makes them so much better. Nice and kind of shoestringy. They're really nice and crispy and good. And that sandwich, I gotta get back on that. I, I get the hype, but I could eat it every day. San Luis Obispo is home to California Polytechnic State University, also known as Cal Poly. And in Poly Canyon on campus, there's a spot called the Experimental Structures Laboratory or the Architecture Graveyard. We'll tell you more about what that is in a bit, but first we have to figure out where to park on a college campus and how to get to it. proving to be a little difficult. Every parking lot, you know, has a permit that you need. There's no way to like buy one for like a day use kind of thing that we found yet. We can't park in parking garages. There's no street parking. I don't know, we're gonna keep looking around, I guess. We're going to some really random parts of campus that I'm not sure we're supposed to be driving through. But on the plus side, we're getting to see a lot of the campus and we've decided that if we ever have kids, we want them to come to school here because it looks really nice and then we can visit. All right, off to the police station to see if they can help us. Success, we've got the parking permit. So we've got to go to parking lot K1. It was six bucks. We have parked in parking lot K1 and it turns out you can actually pay on one of those parking apps to park here. So no need to go to the police station like we did. And now we have to get onto Poly Canyon Road, which will take us to the architecture graveyard. Cal Poly's philosophy is learn by doing, and I'm a really big fan of that. And the Architecture Graveyard is an outdoor experimental laboratory with a unique collection of experimental structures built by engineering, architecture, and design students over the last few decades. All of the structures we've seen so far have been super cool and they're all very different from each other and you can definitely tell how old some of them are but unfortunately as you may notice behind me some of them have been vandalized with graffiti apparently they used to have a caretaker on site that took care of the structures but they haven't in the last few years so people have abused them and we will say especially for the families out there the graffiti uh it's definitely not family friendly at times there's definitely some profanities so we're gonna do our best to blur it out funny enough i mentioned the graffiti and we actually just came across some university the employees who are painting it and covering it all up. I asked them how often they do this and they said this is the first time. So this is years of vandalism that will soon be gone so that these pieces of work that students worked really hard on can now look like how they were supposed to. The rest of today we are heading about 25 minutes southwest of San Luis Obispo to Montaña de Oro State Park which is a beautiful state park right on the coast and since we'll be there tonight and a little bit tomorrow we decided to book a campsite.
Uh, it brings back so many fun memories yeah. being at this campground. We actually had our largest ever travel mishap happen here. It's way too long of a story to tell right now, but when we hit 100K subscribers, we're gonna do a huge Q&A, so if someone remind us to tell you all about it then, it's pretty juicy. <laughs> We've walked about 10 minutes from our campsite to Spooner's Cove, which is actually the only place in the park that's dog friendly to watch what should be a really beautiful sunset. This morning we're hiking the Valencia Peak and Bluff Trail Loop, which combines two of the more popular trails in the park. We're starting off with the more difficult one by climbing to the top of Valencia Peak at 1,347 feet, and then we'll come back down and hike along the Bluff Trail for some beautiful coastal views. giving me lots of Channel Islands flashbacks. One, the scenery is similar with the ocean, but also some mountains, and also we're just going up and down, up and down. This route we're on took us a very weird way to get to the actual Valencia Peak Trail, but we're on it now, and I think we still have quite a bit of elevation to go. Wow, check that out. The whole hike we had, views of the coast. So all of these views we've seen, but we have not seen all these mountainous views. to the more leisurely part of the loop, the Bluff Trail. Three seal friends right here at this oh. bluff. Oh, they're so cool. They're kind of like putting on a little show for us. Yeah, too. they're kind of like dipping down and jumping back up and man, cute little buddies. They're kind of like otters. They're way too big though. Yeah. They're just kind of like laying on the top a little bit and whipping their head around. <laughs> oh, seeing wildlife in the ocean will never not make me smile and squeal. I was trying to be the cool guy and trying to give this couple that walked up a heads up like hey there's seals out there if you want to see them and they're like oh are they are they otters or seals and i was like i don't know and they said they're otters and who this else, one who else said that they were otters <laughs> Where who, are you else? Going? who else who else who <laughs> else she was right he didn't think otters could be that big i but... figured they were like little tiny things but but they were on their backs like you see all the cute otters yeah. otters are one of my favorite animals so that's even 
even better now. That Whatever they were, they're super cute, and I'm so happy we saw them. <laughs> That couple also gave us a tip of a blowhole over here. Right down in here. Laura, she blows! <laughs> The hike ended up being about 7.6 miles and what's really great about this park is that it's completely free which is not the case with most California state parks. It's so close to the neighboring towns and then it's just super gorgeous. For our final stop in San Luis Obispo County, we're at Morro Bay for sunset to see the famous Morro Rock. This Morro is the shortest of the nine sisters that we mentioned earlier in this video, and it reminds us so much of Haystack Rock at Cannon Beach, which is one of our favorite places in Oregon. The last time we came to this area was at the end of a huge two-week road trip we did from Seattle down to Marfa, Texas and back. And we remember thinking that this was one of our favorite stops on the entire road trip, which was crazy because we only spent like an afternoon in this area, but just something about it, we just loved it and we couldn't really explain why. And after being here for quite a bit longer this time and seeing so much more, we can confirm it is still one of our favorite places, not even just on the California coast, but California as a whole. We love the coastline, the mountains, all the outdoor stuff you can do here, the chill, relaxed small towns that are all around. It's just kind of our happy place so far in California and we're going to be really bummed to leave in a couple days, but we're going to go to one of our other favorite places here on the California coast, Big Sur. do this by myself. And it suns out, guns out, baby. Mm, baby, pew pew, water pistols. <laughs> Adam Frazier, I've loved you since the moment I saw you touching raw meat at Mighty Fine back in 2011. Okay. You make my life so whole. Will you marry me? Oh my yes, God. Yes, yes. With this ring, I thee wed. I hope it fits. <laughs> Does it fit? Yeah. <laughs> We're married again, you guys. Hey. If you missed our last video, Adam lost his wedding ring surfing. So he's been a single man for a bit. But now, we're married. We're back. <laughs> Jack, there's not enough room. You must go yes, into the is. ocean. Yes, there we is. We can't both fit even though it's clearly large enough. You selfish. <laughs> you didn't think we'd go a video without dancing, did you? 